Welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. We're continuing our discussion about pollination. Most flowering plants are pollinated by animals and their color, the shape, and the arrangement of their flowers cater to the different pollinating animals that are most successful for that plant species. So a pollinator for this plant would most likely not have the same pollinator as this plant. Their flowers are shaped very differently to attract separate pollinators. But the copious amounts of pollen that is so troublesome to us, gets in our eyes and sinus cavities at this time of year, is not coming from plants with noticeable flowers. Plants only put so much energy into producing showy noticeable flowers in order to attract pollinators because they require those pollinators to move their heavy grains of pollen or pollen packets from one plant to another, from the male parts to the female parts. But some plants choose a different method of pollination, foregoing the third party altogether and relying solely on wind. Plants like oaks and pines, which are all around us here in Florida, are wind pollinated. And so they produce copious amounts of pollen in order for that pollen to reach the female parts of the same plant or another individual plant. Flowering plants that are wind pollinated usually have imperfect flowers like we learned about last week, where they have a male flowering organ on one plant and a female flowering organ on the same plant, or they could be dioecious where they have those on separate individual plants. In the case of oaks, oaks have male catkins that produce the pollen, copious amounts of pollen, and then they have female flowers on the plant as well much fewer than the male flowers that receive the pollen. And they rely on wind to move that pollen from the male flowers to the female flowers. Pine trees also produce copious amounts of pollen at this time of year. And they're also monoecious, meaning they have male and female parts on the same plant, but they're gymnosperms, so they don't produce flowers like we learned about earlier this year. They produce cones, but they have male cones and female cones on the same plant but they require the wind in order to move that pollen from one to the other. Thanks for joining us for this Terminology Tuesday, and I'll see you guys again next week.